So, capacitors are ways of st storing charge. Yes? Um, so, would you be using a capacitor if you had like a, like, what would be the reasoning behind that? Is it to, is it if you had a lot of resistance, you could force it to go faster through? Like, wait, what? What's the capacitor used for? Yeah, like, what exactly would you, what, for what reason in an electrical circuit or system would you need a capacitor? The, of course, you could just use it for storing charge, so, so or storing energy. So PG&E could use capacitors. I don't think that they do. Um, other people might for some reason. You, you know that you use a capacitor, or I strongly suspect, I didn't check this, maybe I should have, that um, in defibrillators, the, they use the word charging. What do you think you're charging? Uh, a capacitor. You're putting a, a big voltage across a capacitor and then you're disconnecting it and that little light bulb there that you hook it up across, that's your heart. So, so you're discharging a capacitor through your heart. Um, generally what you use capacitors for is things where you have something happening with time. Things that where time is an issue. And the reason is that the capacitor, we can talk about, well, I'll talk about this a little more in a second. In fact, I'm going to ask you some questions. But what happens is that the capacitor, when it's first hooked up, when I first close S1, the capacitor has a lot of charge. Q is big, so the voltage is big. The voltage difference across this light bulb is therefore big right at the beginning. So what happens at the beginning is a lot of current flows. The light bulb lights up a lot. Yes? What is the C and the voltage on the bottom? What is that? Sorry, C is, I, I should have said this since I wrote it down. Uh, thank you. C is the capacitance. It tells you how much charge per volt you can put on that capacitor. If it, capacitance doesn't have a, a size like the volume of, the volume of a, of a container has a size. I can't put more liquid in than a certain amount. Capa plates, on the other hand, metal plates, uh, what determines how much charge you can put on it is mainly how much voltage you have available, because higher voltage will push more charge onto it. And so the capacitance is the C here is, and I could write it this way, C is the charge per whatever voltage you have available, per volt. If you have a big voltage available, you can put a lot of charge on. If you have a big capacitor and a small voltage, you still might be able to get a lot of charge on if the capacitor is big. So C is the capacitance. So what I was, what I was saying earlier was, uh, when you first connect the light bulb, the voltage across the capacitor is big because it has a big charge. And so the current through the light bulb is big. What is current? Current is the rate of change of charge. So the if the current is big, then the capacitor is losing charge fast. And so if the capacitor is losing charge fast at the beginning, its charge is going down fast, then what happens is that later on, there'll be a smaller charge across the capacitor. So there will be a smaller voltage across the capacitor. So there will be a smaller current going through that light bulb. And, and so the rate of change of the charge goes down and down and down, and that's an exponential rate. when you discharge the capacitor. Then it discharges exponentially. It's a big current at the beginning, smaller current later on. Similarly, you've probably noticed that, and I'm just going to draw it in, you've probably noticed that the temperature was changing more quickly at the beginning than it will at the end. And the reason the temperature changes quickly at the beginning 
is because the temperature difference is big, so the heat flow is big. The heat flow depends on the temperature gradient. When the temperature gradient is large, which it was at the beginning, then there's a lot of heat flow. And as the temperature gradient goes down, the heat flow goes down. And so this slope goes down. And eventually it'll aim at, you know, after an hour or two, it'll aim at, um, at room temperature. So it'll bottom out at room temperature. These are examples of an important time dependence. I'm not going to go through the calculations here. I'll just leave this on the web. Um, but whenever you find that the flow rate or the flow itself is changing the gradient. So what happens here when this cools off? There's a temperature gradient. It's 100 inside, 25 outside. As the flow happens, the temperature inside goes down. Temperature outside stays the same. So the temperature gradient is dropping as time goes on. And so the rate of change of the temperature drops as time goes on. And that is what an exponential does. The slope is always proportional to the value. So the slope is big when Q is big. The slope is smaller when Q is smaller. And as Q goes to zero, the slope goes to zero. And that's what an exponential function is designed for. That's why people invented it and decided to, we should name this thing. It's the thing where the derivative is, pro is proportional to the function itself. And it's exactly what happens in these kinds of flow cases where the reservoir is finite. So there's only a certain amount of energy in that hot water that needs to go away. So it's a finite amount. And the flow rate changes as the water cools. It gets, cools more and more slowly as it cools off in the same way that this, uh, this capacitor discharges more and more slowly as it discharges. So I'm going to ask you three questions. They're all about exponentials. You've taken math, so you'll know all about exponentials. Um, picture to the right shows delta T for three different objects cooling off to room temperature. So that's the situation. It's just like this water cooling off to room temperature. It's doing it fairly quickly, so these objects must be fairly tiny. But anyway. Um, how is the physical data set, for, how is the physical situation for these two data sets different? It's ob this is, so this is a question about the blue line and the black line. Forget about the red line for a second. It's obvious that the object giving us the blue data set has. Now I better tell you what that word obvious means. Obvious means if you think two things are close to each other, then they're the same. If you can tell they're different, like one of them's half of the other one, then they can be different. But I'm not going to try to trick you by making one physical number, uh, one physical, so let's say one delta t equal to uh, 2 and the other one equal to 2.005 and then insist that you figure out that they're different. If things are different, they're different by a factor of two or something like that. Not, not even close. So that's what the word obvious means. Look for things that are clearly the same or, or probably the same or clearly different. Okay, so the blue data set either has a larger heat capacity or larger thermal resistance, smaller heat capacity or smaller thermal resistance, larger initial delta T, smaller initial delta T, or more than one of the above answers is true. T equals zero. Initial delta T would be delta T at T equals zero. Sorry about that. 